in the far northeast of Scotland. 44, 44. The UK's biggest fishing port is booming. 44, 44, 44. The fishing fleet from Peterhead has been landing record-breaking catches. Every day, men from this harbour town head out to sea to put fish on our plates. Well, lads, it's time for a cup of coffee, time for tea before we haul. They're joined by crewmen from around the world. Woo! Yeah, so it's quite a big haul, so it's got to be a long night by the looks of things. And by the next generation of young fishermen. Arr. Anything could go wrong. Could be something small, something big. You just to be ready at all times. All trying to make it in one of Britain's most dangerous jobs. Got to watch everywhere you're standing. Got to look everywhere for waves coming aboard. Right, spawners, big spawners. But every trip's a gamble. Most fishing trips, it's a case of winging it. And if it fails, you learn by it. So will they return empty-handed or strike it lucky? Money, 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 money. What a crack at Hull. <laughs> Show me the money. A skipper, John Buchan, on the Ocean Endeavour is steaming west to one of Britain's most remote fishing grounds in search of haddock. We'll head out to Rockall, right into the Atlantic. We've got about 280 miles to go, so <laughs> it's going to be a long journey. It'll take just over a day to get there. Joining the Ocean Endeavour's five-man crew for the very first time is 18-year-old rookie deckhand Nathan Foreman. First time out in a trawler, aye, aye. I was on a scallop boat before, only ever out about 30 miles at the most, so this is all new. Being out about 300 miles from land, so big difference to what I'm used to. When I was about 12 years old, I think, I wanted to go away in the boats, but my mum always says no. She says it was too dangerous and she didn't want her son going out to sea. I just wanted to do it. Nathan was excited to come away. Hopefully he'll, he'll stick in and we can learn him a bit more and he'll become a fully-fledged deckhand. No, for a Wi-Fi passport. For a Wi-Fi passport. I thought he was wanting to kind of put the instruction of the boat and stuff like that. You want to... What modern loons, can us? Change days. When I was young, you come up into Wheelhouse to find out about the boat and where a muster station was. And now they're up for a Wi-Fi passport. But Nathan's first deep sea trip may not be a comfortable one. There are warnings of gales in Rockall. Increasing gale 8 or severe gale 9 later, perhaps storm 10 later. Storm Hector is about to blow in, bringing with it gale force winds. You hear any kind of alarms at all? Muster station is here. You yeah. mark for here. Life rafts. Either side of Wheelhouse. loose. We're looking at lovely weather just now, but it's going to be a little bit rough tomorrow. <laughs> I was getting a wee bit of mashed in the market, a bit cool uh, and wine. Back on shore, 24-year-old Jason Jack is being trained up by his father, Martin. Three pound fifty a kilo on your bed. Four pound sixty. It's not competition. It's not competition, no. Together, they run one of the biggest fish buying businesses in town. Got to learn the hard way. And then he doesn't listen to me enough, that's his problem. No. But come on. My name is Cynthia. Nine times out of ten, you do now. It's hard for me to admit, but he usually is right. Get up. <laughs> Each morning, Jason is dispatched to Peterhead Market, where he spends up to £50,000 a day on fish destined for clients all over the UK and Europe. 
I feel pressure for the customers, but I feel more pressure, I feel like my dad and my family. A lot more. Because <laughs> a customer, they're just over the phone and up with my dad's <laughs> sitting right beside me. This is Peterhead Fish Market. This is for it all happens. <laughs> my dad sent the prices I think he wants to pay in the market. And then he sends a further text saying, this is what I'm wanting quantities, so like, give me 20 of this, give me 30 of that. <laughs> then you've just got to work it back and forth. I was on the on, used to push me in my pram when I was there. <laughs> Over £400,000 worth of fish are bought and sold here each day. Do you give me a bit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Too late was a cry. But behind the banter, the competition is ruthless. No. Jason's competing with ten other buyers for both the best fish and the best prices. 60. Seafood sorting. Take on a boot. If I wasn't here, the monks would be cheap as bits. So shoes. So shh. 20. 15. 450. 420. No. Fish is quite expensive. That I thought it was going to be. Trying to get my dad's ask me to get at his price. Struggling a wee bit of it. I'll work out. Yeah, but look at this. In the Atlantic, the ocean endeavour is riding out Storm Hector. Ooh, you bigger you. It's never handy when the skipper gets wet. We're just hauling our first all here, hoping there's going to be some haddockies for us. Things always go wrong in the bad weather. They never ever go wrong in the good weather. On the deck, rookie Nathan is trying to stay alert. Got to watch everywhere you're standing. Good to look everywhere for waves coming aboard. Flash is coming in. On here, you're always getting jumped about. A lot of stuff can happen. It's very easy to kind of fall or get caught in a rope, get dragged over the side. A wave can knock you overboard. So there's a lot of stuff you've got to watch for all the time as well as doing your job. So uh, it's definitely quite a dangerous job. All the battle gear on and go and face the elements. John's burned three grand of fuel just getting here. He needs to catch 200 boxes of fish each day to turn a profit. Because I know I have to catch fish. And when you're not catching fish, it can stress you a bit because you just think in the back of your head, I've got this to pay, I've got this to pay. And you can't need to give the guys a pay. <laughs> Oh, waste of time. How have things been going? <laughs> <laughs> so far, so bad, eh? Not a uh, very good start for travelling so far. But we'll find him yet. We've, uh, we've got to find him. <laughs> we've got to find him. I've got bills to pay, uh, crew to pay. We've got to find him quick. It's time to haul again. Yeah, lads. Time for a cup of coffee, time for tea before we haul. Right, have another look and see what I resist him. The crew are on standby around the clock. Every five hours, night and day, they get up, haul nets, process the catch, then grab some sleep. 15, 20 minutes before we haul, they go pay a cup of coffee and get going, but. I think they'll maybe eke out every little last minute of sleep. <laughs> For Nathan, this punishing routine is a struggle. Definitely tough going, like not the easiest jobs in the world. Getting dragged out your bed every couple of hours. And a nice sleep, and that's it. Time to go up again. The troll is a hard job. A lot of them don't like the workload, and they don't last very long. I've had quite a few of them, and then I lasted more than one or two trips. I'm hoping that he'll get over his 
slight tiredness to start with and pull through. John's hunting for valuable haddock. So far, the fishing has been slow, but underwater sensors are indicating their net is full. We're hauling a wee bit early. Two red lights under the catch sensor, so I'm hoping there's a, a touch of haddock this time. I'm hoping there's something good here. Get a little bit excited. <laughs> Come on. Up you come. And the wrong with? A twist in their net has tricked their sensors. A waste of time. All the fish were above the code in. That's what put the lights off. Ah, disaster. Yeah, that's how quickly things can go for it. Yes, we've got them to. No one, huh? Yeah. Damn. No, the code end. The bit where the, the fish gather at the very end, the lifting, we were lifting them aboard one at a time. It had a twist in it. Hence, all the fish were up above that, where the sensors are, which meant the sensors went red. So, instead of having a good haul like we thought we'd had, we've got zip. Waste of time. Whoa. At Peterhead Market, buyer Jason Jack is struggling with the quality of fish. Yeah. Not a chance. This fish only good. Like. 7 up, 190. Is it? No. Can you smell him? Look, look at us. Oh, it's absolutely bonkers. <laughs> See the difference in colour between Artie and a beautiful freshie. Is it tea? You really know. 40. 50, but Jason still got clients that are relying on him to deliver. Two. Five. I've got and fit what needed. Plan now is go get breakfast. <laughs> go get breakfast. I'm on a diet, so. Pollock, four a large. Mark Crown. So what I do here is, this is send back to the office. Tells them species, size, what colour tallied so that when it goes back to the factory, it's easily processed. Sint. Oh, I am. Um, listen, to this. listen, I forgot the forgot the name to tell you. I'm going to be a dad in January. Honestly, really honestly. Thank you. Honest to God. This baby Jason Jack. <laughs> Moving out, getting a bairn, dog. I've got a dad board already. On the ocean endeavour, John Buchan is still plugging away. It's not been going according to plan. It's not been the best this stage of trip. So, yes, it is maybe squeaky bum time. <laughs> He's trying his luck in a different part of Rockall. This is what we came all this distance for, just beautiful, big, thick haddocks. Primus Maximus. What a cracking haul. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> oh, I would think there's about 80 boxes there. Most of them lovely big haddocks, which last week in the market was fetching 130, 140 quid a box. So that's a, that's a cracking haul. <laughs> Show me the money. But not everyone is delighted. For an already exhausted Nathan, it means hours more work gutting and packing the fish. Oh, it's a quite a big haul. We'll probably still be on deck when the next haul comes aboard, so it's got to be a long night by the looks of things. I think Nathan's struggling a bit. His actual words was, this is mental. 
<laughs> says, what do you mean it's mental? Oh, he's all just the whole thing is just mental. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work in a chip shop before I started to see. Now, if I knew your work goes into the fish, and every fish that I stuck in the frying pan, I would definitely appreciate it a lot more of it. You've got to work for your money here. It ain't an easy job, especially the single troll, because you are hauling in a net every time. 24-7, don't stop. We don't stop until the boats fall or we're not at the time. The best daddy ever. John Buchan's Father's Day is bittersweet. I love you and Disney. <laughs> and I love you. Lots of love from Carmen. It's my wee daughter. She's nine. But there's been another message from home. It's a little bit downhearted this morning. Uh, <clears throat> a bit of news that my auntie had died. My auntie passed away at uh, three o'clock this morning. I'll head home and pay my respects. <clears throat> you miss bad things, but you, <laughs> you miss good things as well. <laughs> Missed quite a good, quite a few of my kids' parties and my own birthday party. And <laughs> but uh, it's not fine to be away from my family and ours. When there's someone like this... <clears throat> it's an abrupt end to this trip for the ocean endeavour. We've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows, hellish weather. Then another good day, and then some very bad news. And now you're taking in beautiful scenery and a lovely day in the west coast heading into land. For Nathan, this might be his first and last trip on a deep sea trawler. It's been the most brutal 10 days of my whole life. I'm looking forward to get home, get to my own bed, get a decent night's sleep. It is tough your first trip. He's he's good he's went from from frying fish in a local chip shop to going out to the middle Atlantic in a storm. I really hope he comes back for another trip. I'm, I'm, I'm having my doubts. Next time, Peterhead boat, the Rose Bloom, have unexpected visitors. You're always a bit nervous when you get boarded because, you know, these are the fish police. 